Thoughts on the England squad? I'll be real, there's some shocks in there. I'm guessing you're asking me about the seven cuts that happened today. There's some shocks in there, there's some I'm not surprised. James Trafford, I'm not surprised he's out. Not at all. Maguire, healthy recovery to him. I think it's devastating for him because this probably would have been his last tournament, especially if someone like Gwei, he does really well at this tournament. Gwei, he does really well. He's younger than Maguire. He's probably going to be favored going forward, especially if England have a good tournament. So I feel bad for Maguire, man. Uh, no matter what anyone has said about him in the past, his performances for England can never really be questioned. So I think it is a bit of a devastating blow for him and for the national team as well, too, because I think they are a better team than Maguire is there. Granted, that's through injury. Grealish. The whole argument about when Rashford was left out of the England team was, oh, well, if Rashford is based on form, why is is Grealish there? Well, there's your answer to that. Grealish is now out of the England fold as well too. And to be honest with you, it's hard to argue. It's hard to argue. Grealish has had a really, really poor 12 months, both on and off the pitch. And I have to say, from what I'm allowed to say, I think Grealish needs the summer off to refocus his mind and re-get his career back on track. And I mean that his footballing career and his Man City career, or if it's not at Man City, his career in general, he needs this summer to clear his mind and get back into the mentality that he gets his career back on track. That's all I'm going to say on that subject. Madison. Madison's just had a bad return since he came back from, from injury for Spurs, honestly. First half of the season, you could have argued he was the signing of the season in the Premier League. Since he's come back, oof, poor man. Poor. If it was anyone else, you probably could argue that he has like uh, credit in the bank, but Madison has never had that credit in the Bank of England. He had to be an amazing form of Leicester to even make the World Cup squad. So, and then you also look at the competition in those positions too. Jude is an attacking midfielder. Foden is an attacking midfielder. Eze, who, while Madison's stock has fell, Eze's has just rose in the last six months. Crystal Palace are the most representative club in this England team by a mile. Glasner changed all these guys' lives. So, at the end of the day, it probably became between uh, Eze and a Madison, and you also look at the way Eze played in that last uh, friendly. Looked really, really good. So I think it is a, a bit harsh on Madison. I saw his statement today. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't really feel any way about it, to be honest. Uh, I think we always complain that players aren't authentic in themselves. One thing of Madison, he's always authentic and himself and always speaks his mind. I don't really have a problem with it. It did seem at times that he was kind of, you can definitely tell he's annoyed that he missed out. And he probably believes deep down that even though he he's had a tough six months, he is good enough to be in that team. But... That's the way it goes sometimes. Branthwaite, that's one I didn't see coming, guys. I can't lie. I, I thought Branthwaite, especially since Maguire is out of the England team through injury, I definitely thought that Branthwaite was someone that should have been on that plane. When you talk about leg for right leg replacement with Maguire, an aggressor, front-footed center back, left-footed, that can also play those angles from that left-hand side. Ball carrier, good passer between the lines, young, athletic. I, I probably would have played Jared, or I probably would have brought Jared Branthwaite along, potentially even started him. Uh, I th I'm sure he's going to go with Guehi, which isn't a bad shot whatsoever, by the way. I think Branthwaite is pretty unlucky not to be going to the Euros. Maybe a tournament too early for him, but me personally, I, I think he's good enough to be there. Over Lewis Dunk, 100%. I think I think Dunk, every time we've seen him for England, Dunk is almost becoming like the, the, the Mings or the Cody in that team. The way Lukaku ragdolled him last friendly against Belgium, he wouldn't have been in my squad. The Dean Henderson? Yeah, yeah, Dean Henderson is in. Um... Dean Hunter, yo, Glasner changed these Crystal Palace players' lives, man. Wow. Who else is missing? Curtis Jones. I feel for Curtis Jones, to be honest with you. I would have brought him. But also, I understand. I think Adam Morton getting into the England fold has hurt Curtis Jones. I think if Adam Morton hadn't kind of burst onto the scene these last six months, uh, Curtis Jones would have made the team. But Warden is some player, man. Warden is some player. And um, who was the last one? Kwanzaa. Again, I think a tournament too early for him. Had a good season, deputized well when Konate was out, but I don't think he can really complain too much about that. The rest of the squad, I said on Twitter, I, I think there's one thing is for sure, the criticism of Southgate when it comes to these squads has always been that he favors players too much, politics come into it, he has his favorites. Everyone's always said that, right? Why is Maguire in this team? Why is Sterling in this team? Uh, why is Henderson in this team? I don't think you can make that argument when you look at this squad. Bar maybe Dunk, who's kind of in there for experience, because it is a young squad. Bar Luke Shaw, and let's be honest, Luke Shaw is there because every other left back uh, for England is either injured or out of form, and he is the best they have. Bar those two, can you really look at this team and uh, maybe Ivan Tony as well too, not in the greatest form, but let's not forget he's had a, a, a tough couple of months because of that, that betting scandal. Bar those two, three, it's hard to say that this England team isn't based on form, right? We can all agree on that. He has gone for form players. Eze, it's a form pick. Wharton, that's a form pick. Gordon, that's a, that's a form pick. Bowen, that's a, that's a form pick. You can't argue that he hasn't picked on form. The question, is it the correct thing to do? Should England be picking on form? Should any international team be picking on form? France doesn't pick on form, guys. I'll tell you that right now for free. Rabiot has made every single France team since 2018, not because he plays especially well for, for, for Juventus, 
because Deshaun trusts him. Matuidi, for the longest time, it was similar. Giroud, similar. Adil Rami was making every France team as long as he was fit because the coach trusted him. So international teams have never really been based on form. And that was something I always used to argue whenever people said, oh, Maguire shouldn't be in the England team because he's not playing great for United. Excuse me, Southgate's not picking the United team. He's picking the England team. So he doesn't give a shit how Maguire plays for, for Man United. If he plays well for England, he's getting picked for England. That's, that's always the way I've looked at it, guys. So I don't know, to be honest with you, right? I look at the players he left out. I don't think anyone is too big of a miss. I think if he had left out Trent, that would have been massive because I think Trent has the feature at right back, by the way, not in midfield. I think Trent has the feature at right back, potentially even starting. Rashford is maybe the one that you could argue on his day provides a profile in a bit of X factor that no one else in this England team does. Rashford. The problem with Rashford is he's so confidence-based. He's so moody that if Rashford's not on it, you might as well not even bring him on the team. Like, it's like playing with 10 men when Rashford's not on it. Now, when he's playing, you have one of the biggest game breakers, one of the most, the, the biggest X-factor players in world football, not even just in English football. But is that risk worth taking? I think you could argue both ways. I think you could argue that someone like Gordon is maybe a bit more reliable, but you could also argue that in international t uh, football, cup knockout competition, a player like Rashford's profile is a bit more useful. I hear both sides. But just like real, well, different reasons to Grealish, let me make that very, very clear. Again, without getting into anything. For different reasons to Grealish, but also the same thing, I do think this summer for Rashford, staying away from playing football, getting his mind right, and entering next season for Man United in a, in a healthy, clear-minded way, I think is the best thing for his career right now. Because he can't afford to have another season like he did last year.